Right, so I'm gonna finish the this course here. I think I'm gonna walk through the I found the first lesson. Just see because I don't remember exactly. Let me see if I So I think this one is pretty simple. Just explaining how neural neural networks work. Which is weights and biases, weights and biases in a matrix with back propagation, which is just the derivatives to calculate there are based on the error function, which can vary depending on the situation on testing. So separating the time and this is not done random randomly because it's gonna affect the nature of the time series so you have to split it uh, from one from the beginning to one portion and then from that portion to then to calculate if i remember correctly so futures and targets then shift and Here is dropping and no values in place equals true. I think this uh, replaces the, but I'm not sure with what the no values replaces the no values, but I'm not sure with exactly what. Then plotting, plotting again. So I think I did up to the fifth one, which means there's two left. I'm just gonna run all of them. You know, I remember when I was trying to do some of this on my own, I had trouble with the first part part of this of separating the columns and preparing separating the yeah the columns into categorical columns and numerical columns and then cleaning the data that kind of stuff because I never know I guess the best way is to just separate them and then merge them at the end separate the categorical and the numerical convert the categorical uh, clean the numerical and rescale then do the cross validation analysis on both of them and then merge i guess and then a split maybe i'm not sure where the split comes if it's before or after it makes more sense after to me because yeah because you want to be careful about the proportions you get from the data but in time series, I don't think it matters because you're, you're not going to split it randomly. So in other situations, when it's not, when it's gonna, you're going to split it randomly, it might change uh, the impact. It might overfit or underfit because your test data is not representable. It's not. That doesn't represent really well the validation or vice versa. So I remember that was a problem. So when we arrange book sales, the type store sales. So setting the index to the date, to be ready. Then store and BR and appendix equals true. And groups by the mean, <coughs> the mean of the sales. Invention, invention, linear regression as over more. No, is, is that the model equations are explainable? So okay, spotting here. 
subplot, int, another subplot, and separates the here again, which are creatures and target. So it makes df time equals this, then fits there. Fit a leg future to star sales. Yeah. Yes, next one. I don't think I'm gonna spend too much time on these ones that I did. Spend more time on the ones that I have to finish. Yeah, so this is just graph stuff. Now it's doing something. We will use a function from stats models library called deterministic process. Using this function will help us avoid some tricky failure cases that can arise with time series and linear regression. The order argument refers to polynomial order one for linear, two for quadratic, three for cubic, and so on. So it takes dates from the training data, dummy future for the bias, the time dummy, and drop terms if necessary to avoid collinearity. A deterministic process, by the way, is a technical term for a series that is non-random or completely determined. Create our mod trend model basically as before, though not the addition, but if it there's that false argument. The trend scrollers. Intercepts the same as the cons future from the deterministic process. Don't understand this really well, but demi future for the bias. Okay, next one. I think this is the last course I'm gonna do on Kago. Kago. Unless they make more, but from the ones they have there, I think the other ones are not necessary at all. So, same thing as before here. So this is creating an object with the types of each column, I guess. Then when it, it uh, activates this read that CS, read in the line CSV to read the data frame, it passes the object, which I never done before. So. So spotting again. I think I remember why I stopped this one. Put sales that rolling. Uh, Twenty six five day window. Put the put the average at the center of the window. Mean periods equals six. Choose about half the window size. 
At Matas Shukut sales should compute a, compute a moving average with appropriate parameters for trans estimation. So identify trans, average sales roll. Mean periods 183, create a trend of future. This term is crush create a future set for cubic trend model. Also create futures for 90 day forecast. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go to the next one. So it's still two more. I think this is true redundant stuff for me. So I get bored. Not the machine learning part, but the time series and this explanations here. But obviously it's not a problem with the course, it's just they have to do this because some people were not gonna know. So it's just, it's just basically plotting stuff still. And now comes the machine learning part, which is using deterministic process again. Hey, hey Jake, what's up? Where, is, where there's not defined chance, there is frequency. As it pertains to stocks, there is a flow that can be learned, as it is so volatile and there are infinite possibilities. It is impossible to read probabilities only where there is defined chance. I mean, probabilities uh, side, I think you mean, one, one's progress. Yeah, I think it's a paradox. It's uh, obviously there is consistency in the universe because of gravity. So things remain relatively the same day after day. But at the same time, there is variance and randomness. So I think the Mendel Brown model makes more sense, which is everything is fractal by nature because everything is infinity. So yeah, but the question is how much of that you can predict and where is the, where is the line between deterministic and random, random, completely random. And I think that breaks down into the quantum level. And it might be possible. That's why you should never try to predict the future and just predict the past, let's say, uh, based on the probability of things going. You can never predict the unpredictable because probability itself is a flawed system. Like you, uh, I don't know what the right word should say. Like you incite me to think? I don't know. With your project there on Arsenio. Arsenio. So 
So, did I read this stuff? Do you have any suggestions? I don't know if you're there, but if you're there, do you have any suggestions on a website that I can build? The first website. Something that is uh, might be useful and then I can that I could do in on stream to put on my portfolio. Maybe I could do something with stocks, right? Like build a or crypto. Build a website that tracks keep cryptocurrency, something like like that. Studying color. What happened to the sound stuff? <laughs> I feel you because the that's the thing. That's the the same thing that happens to me because every everything is connected so you get into a rabbit hole and then you go on forever and then you want to study all of it it's because it's, everything is the same thing yeah color is frequency right sound is frequency true i'm not really familiar with string theory but just from the basic basic level or by the way that it is it works it sounds it seems like it's the correct approach and the scientists have problem with string theory because uh, they can't prove it but i think that's the problem because the ultimate theory of everything is not going to be provable. If it was provable, then it wouldn't be a theory of everything. And that's the paradox. That's why science breaks down. But I'm not sure how to create a system that goes beyond science. Because then you don't have a framework for people to relate with themselves and to find common ground. So it's tough. So I think we'll go next to the next one already. That's another problem I have with this is that I think and I might be wrong with this, but it's just my philosophy right now. I think that most of these studies are off about the way that the things work. And that's why it's, it's kind of boring to me. Because I think they're teaching a bunch of things that don't make a lot of sense. But it's the current paradigm, so. And I might be off as well. And it's not because they're teaching, because it's just that everybody believes that. It's not just Kago, just. But I don't think it's the right, right approach. Yeah, I guess it depends on the employers as well, right? I'm gonna have to deviate from machine learning for to make money because I think machine learning it's gonna be harder to to find either find a job or find freelance freelancing work because probably the people that search for freelancers in the machine learning space they are probably searching for someone with a lot of ti titles or a lot of experience not experience but uh with testimonials and the stars and stuff
Yeah, so this, I remember, is just you're lagging the, <clears throat> the data to use as validation. Validation SAS. You're lagging by a time frame. There's so many things I can do as well. I just have to get better at coding. That should be should become unconscious uh, where I don't have to think about it anymore. And that way I can catch my theoretical side, I guess. Because there's so many ideas with sound, with colors, with stocks with physics, with human nature, and so many things to do. So this is one previous Previous one before I stop. So it's just plotting here again. And this is plotting the lag, I, I guess. The lag plots indicates that the relationship of blue visits to its lags is mostly linear, while the partial autocorrelation suggests the dependence can be captured using lags 1, 2, 3, and 4. And like a time series dependence with the shift method. For this problem, we'll fill in the missing values the lag increase with 0. So I'm not sure what the shift method is in pandas. Maybe it's just right shift equals true. Oh, yeah, it's that shift. Hmm. That's useful to know. Nature has become mostly learned behavior. The muscle memory purpose is to continue to rape until jailed. Yeah, but the, I think the more interesting question is where is the rapist coming from? Because if you think about it, everyone is a rapist. And everyone is a killer. And everyone is a drug dealer. And everyone is corrupt. Because everyone has a dark side. So what, what, what are the circumstances of the environment that makes certain generic, genetic components activate in some people and not in the others? And where is the moment that belief systems become action? And that tribes are, are created. And how is that social structure being shaped by the environment? I don't know if you've seen this. I'm not sure if I posted, but I think it was on my favorites somewhere I think it was on network X documentation yeah but I don't remember it was not source archive maybe or maybe the docs there. Guides here. 
a Facebook network analysis. You ever seen this stuff? And I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's not like common sense. If you are in the, their position, you'll probably do the same, but clearly people are doing this. So if you don't understand this, there's a example of this thing called network X, which is a library in Python for a representation of graphical net networks, a yeah, representation of networks. And this is an example of the connection between 10 people. So first this is like this, but then you modify the physics of the network there and it shows up like this. So I was thinking about using these connections and obviously I think people like Mark Zuckerberg uh, on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, those are the, are the main ones probably. They're obviously doing this and then running a bunch of calculations to study the connection and ge the geometrical relationship between people. So it can, it, they can find the, they can find and predict behavior. Which is really interesting if you think about it. And I think they did this on the election there to skew the election towards Trump, I think. Studying personality types. Human nature has become mostly learned behavior. The most, uh, oh, the silence before. So I was thinking about doing something like this, but it looks uh, very difficult. That's the problem. And obviously, <laughs> this is definitely going to relate to frequency and sound and color as well, just like everything. But if you want to study about it, uh, there's also a name, the name of the library that creates this is inside the network X library. I think it's called physics, the module or the file. And there, there's some stuff that shows how the, this algorithm works. So basically you can, I think you can scrape this data in Facebook or Instagram or something like that. And then you can create model modules about it. You can create uh, connections and then test different things. Just pretty much what Facebook is really. Just studying human behavior to sell people stuff. Based on these diagrams and this mass data. And I don't think people understand how much of their actions and beliefs. Maybe every portion of her actions and beliefs is a consequence of just impulses and nature. So basically you have no control over it. But I still believe in free will because I think there is also a portion of that that goes outside of the realm of physics and space time. So it has to be a paradox there. So this is the fifth one or no? No, the fourth one. So let's see if I can, probably gonna have to spend some time thinking, just solve this stuff. The next challenge. So it's,
Yeah, so I remember this vaguely. I remember this stuff here. This Fourier stuff. So maybe I didn't solve all of this one. True. No, I did. So concatenate, concatenates them. Oh, so maybe I stopped here. Input contains nay, none, infinite, or a value too large for the type load 64. Revivex, what's up, man? Uh, what projects are you talking about? The vis visualization stuff? Discord API wrapper in Python? Hmm. So this is for to create bots for Discord? Sounds interesting. I think I stopped here. Yeah. So maybe this is just. I don't know what's going on with this one. Nice. And where are you going to put it? You're going to put it on GitHub? If you're gonna make it available somewhere, if you could post on the Discord, I do appreciate that. So I can check it out later. But I think uh, you have to pay to use Discord, to use bots, I'm not sure. I didn't research a lot about Discord bots. Hmm. Yeah, we'll look at it later, man. I need to finish this stuff here. But thank you for sharing. Don't? Nice. So probably play around with this. Let me see. Added the code is next so to create the following features. 14 day rolling media. Media not flag target. So isn't just the same thing here? I'm confused. But instead of me, you use media. And then 14. 7 day rolling instead of division. Yes, the D. It's 
seven day sum of promotions with center window. And this is desk allow stuff. So I don't remember this part here. Maybe I'll have to open up the tutorial. So it might be something like this. Promotion is centered window. So I remember there was a centered somewhere in the deterministic process stuff. Maybe this own promo here. Rolling. So the other ones are correct. Seven days sum of promotions with center of window. So maybe I remove this. Oh no, I have to put that because seven day. So center equals true. No. It's probably not going to work, but. Yeah. Let's see if there. Check out the Pandos window documentation for my statistics you can compute. So what if I click this? Also try explanation weighted windows by using EWM in place of rolling. Explanation decay is often a realistic representation of how effects propagate over time. That's another thing that I need to study, but obviously Layer on uh, radiation. Uh, exponential decay. No, so where did I read radiation here? I think I read, I read, I read radiation. Yeah, I've read exponential decay and then I remember of radiation. Rolling objects are returned by rolling window, rolling calls from the scrolling. Rolling count of known non observations. Calculate the rolling sum. So, this is the one that I want. Rolling objects are returned by rolling calls. When is data frame dot rolling? When is the series that rolling inside? Expanding objects are returned by that expanding calls. Exponential moving window objects are returning, returned by this. For NumPy compatibility, you will not have it. So what are the arguments? So maybe takes an object. I think I'm just gonna look at the solution. If it doesn't take any arguments, then how can I say that is in the center? Maybe it's not on promo day one. Message sales that lock on promotion. Seven days sum of promotions with centered window. Maybe you should do the deterministic stuff. And let me look at the tutorial before I check the answer.
Yeah, there's nothing here. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, I don't see anything, so probably just gonna look at the answer. Oh, we can look at the hint first. On promo, that promo. Is that what I did? Oh, so the center goes on the wrong stuff. So that makes sense. Center equals true. So now it's probably correct. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I forgot to put a timer just to see how much time I spend on this. Whatever. No, it's failed. I don't know why. No, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Components and residuals. That we can design effectively with hybrids. We need a better understanding of how time series are constructed. Set up now three patterns of dependence, trends, seasons, and cycles. Many time series can be closely described. An additive model of just three components plus some essentially unpredictable, entirely random error. Each of the terms in this model we would then call a component of the time series. The residuals of a model are the difference between the target the model was trained on and the predictions the model makes. The difference between the actual curve and the fitted curve, in other words, but plot the residual against the future. So this is, I'm gonna skip this stuff, I guess. So model.fit, I'm just interested in the machine learning part. And honestly, I'm just I just want to finish this so it's not unfinished. But obviously, I'm going to learn more by actually doing the things. But this was a good I think this was a good preparation for when I actually do do stuff because I remember before I started I didn't know anything about Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much didn't know anything about machine learning before so it was a very good introduction and i think that's the whole point of doing this courses here it's not necessarily to learn but just to become familiar with the concepts and the libraries I still don't understand what this is, but I don't think I'm going to use it in practice. Might be wrong, though. So just plotting. Then this. Call name is select next I'll select the times. Label and code name for interested indices future. So this is the part that I found hard. 
when I was trying to do this by myself. So it's looping through the select all the columns with all the categorical columns on the X X data frame. Then here, if I'm not mistaken, this is for when you don't want a variable to change. But it's pretty much like a variable. And factorize, I don't know what it does. But it maybe yeah, it can't be the factorial because it's a call, it's a categoric categorical column. They were encoding for no seasonality. Now we convert to trend operations made earlier. That will give us the trend that residual series that XGBoost can learn. So stack, I don't know what it is as well. Pivot by to long stack and convert data frame to series squeeze. Great residual residuals, the collection of the trended series on the training set. So maybe I should write this stuff uh, on this thing here. Just study later. A stack. Let's see. I have stack here. Which I still didn't got the time to do it. Squeeze. Yeah, I'll start this later. Same thing before. You add fit and predict what methods should this minimal class. So this is interesting to me. Because I don't have a lot of experience building classes. Store column names from fit method. So model one, model two. I guess one is the fit, the other is the predict. Define fit method for boosted hybrid. Hybrid complete the fit definition for the boosted hybrid hybrid class. Refer back to steps one and two from the hybrid forecasting residuals section in the tutorial if you need. So I no, have no idea what I have to do. Complete the fit definition for the booster hybrid hybrid class. Oh, so this is part of the class here. So I have index, columns, so this is the simplest one, I guess, 
just soft that mother true probably oops with y residual the other ones i'm not sure about Because I can use a model dot fit, but I'm not sure. Let's see if it's imported here somewhere. Did I save? Yeah. So do I have to do that here? Oh, here. So this is why this is the equation here. But it can't be Y train and Y fit. So maybe it's model one minus model two. Self dot model. A oh, white fits here. So here has to be a white train. Though. Uh, PD dot data frame. Then something here. Maybe. No, here's you fit the model. So it doesn't, it's not a. Yeah, so here you fit and here you make predictions. But why is this Y fit here? We're gonna make predictions here. Let's see if there are, there's anything here. So here it is. In a model dot predict next train. So that should be the same thing here. But the model is made before. Yeah, model equals linear regression. Basically, these two lines here. I think here is this. You create the model, but here is x1 and y, I guess. x1 and x2, maybe. Or maybe the model comes from here. You add, fit, and predict methods to this minimal class.
So maybe it's some of that model this car one. And here's why. Then here, yeah, but it can't be Y here. That should be uh, X one. So th then is it X one or X two? Or maybe it's not this at all. This is just. Self dot model one dot fit. Maybe that's the thing. Yeah, I have no idea. To be honest. Not predict. And I have to make this equals to model. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see here. So it predicts only if one. So it has to be X1, but then which one am I going to pick there? And here X2. And let me try this. Self dot model one. Now it works, maybe. So it can't be self because self references to the the class. And it has to be model one. Because this is already making it equal there. I guess that's it. No, line 26, add method to class. So is this line here? Oh, so maybe I didn't run this, so that's why. So now, and now it gives me a different name other one is not defined. So maybe now it's soft that mother one. There's a mismatch in its score dimension zero. Model dot predict predict extra. So maybe it has to fit. I think I'm gonna try all of them and see which one it works. I don't understand what the X one and X two are supposed to be. Yeah, so I think it's the same line. Yeah, same line. Maybe it's over here and it didn't pay attention. I don't know. So, uh, X1. Yeah, but then I think I tried this before. It didn't work. I'm just going to look at the hint, it's easier. So self model one fit X1 and Y. X1 and Y. So the errors be. Make predictions with self dot model one.
Also that's the hint. So self mother one dot align and all. So self. Oh, but I'd, I'd make it equal there. So it's different than this one. Maybe I should do it the same way. Just to see what happens. So it's obviously not X true. So maybe it's X one here. Y train is not defined. Oh, here. Hmm. So maybe is Y minus Y fit. Yeah, so I'm not sure. It's probably not the wrong, the right path because otherwise, I probably wouldn't be getting this reshape. Then it has the true self. Oh, here it already puts here. So it's just this part. Yeah, I don't know. Give me a look at the solution there again. Yeah. There was this stuff here. White fit here. White train comes from her. On this split. Oh, here, why fit? Oh, it says Y here. Y minus. 
that wife did. Why is it, why is it not working? Let me see. So self model true is a problem. So it's probably this that is X true. And then Y residual, maybe. But maybe it might be the Y as well. Let's see. Not correct, no? Nice. Now the final predict methods for the boosted hybrid class. Refer back to step three. So the hybrid forecasting with residuals section in the thorax. So I have to define the predict method for the boosted hybrid class. So this one is the same as before. Yeah, self what model true dot predict x true y and then here I just y prod maybe don't know oh, let's try this Why is not defined? Where? Oh, here. So maybe it's just this. So it's telling me that the, the shape is wrong. Doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. Here, data dimension must match training data dimension. Yeah, so it's this line. So let's go back to the thorough, see if there is anything here. Can help me with that one. Yeah. I don't see anything here that immediately now only here. Yeah, but I have to use the X Y and X true. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So only if it's both of them, but yeah, so let me look at the hint again. Also self that model one. Not sure. Oh, it's written here. I'm so dumb. So if it's not X1, it has to be X2. Not X2, it has to be X1. In cry. That's itself. Model 1, predict. 
Xbox One. So. No, so here is not by brand. Self dot model. True dot predict. Probably X one as so. well. Now it should be correct. So maybe it's extra. Okay. Now ready to use your new boosted hybrid class. Create a model for the store. Save as data. Run the next cell to set up the data for training. Be good at not to do anything. Maybe family sales. Hopefully the last part is not too long. So I can finish this quickly. Train boosted hybrid. Create a hybrid model by initializing boosted hybrid with class with linear progression. So I think it's... Uh, I'm not sure what comes first there to initialize. Where was it? I think I passed already. Maybe in the imports, I can see. Let's go learn import linear regression. So linear regression is already the thing. Should do. But then I'm not sure if I can pass this booster hybrid inside of it. I'm not sure. That's the right way. X1, probably X2. Model, not predict. Oh, so maybe it's that way, so. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, it should be one of them. Yeah, I think, uh, so I always get confused with this. But I think here is supposed to, I'm supposed to put the X. Because that should predict the X matrix there. So I think this one is one of the X. Linear regression object has no attribute more than one. Oh, I need to pass. Ah, I need to pass the arguments. That's true. And why? I'm not sure if it is initialized before. Why? No, just the models. No, so I need to pass a model. Model 1. Or model 2. And then you need to call it. I'm just not sure how to initialize this in the beginning. I think I do it. I think I'm doing the wrong way. I 
Yeah, so this is how you create a model, but how do you put the class? Oh, I have to. Yeah, obviously. It's uh, the other way around, obviously. So I pass the model through the class, and that makes a lot more sense. Because that was the point of the creating the class in the first place. At least that's what I think, but I'm not sure if it's going to be correct. Model 2. So here I should do, I should be aggressor. Oh yeah, now I understand. So it takes two models and it unifies them. I just have to see. So maybe I'm doing this the wrong way. Uh, here. Require missing one require. Positional argument, why? But so if I do it like this, oh, so now I guess I have to pass the three of them. So now maybe I need to pass both or Y. X true and Y. Or X true next one. So it's probably X1 next true. Yeah, there we go. Depending on your problem, you might want to choose other hybrid combinations than the linear regression plus the extra boost hybrid. You've created in the previous questions. Run the next cell to try other algorithms from second learn. Yeah, so do I have to do anything more on this challenge? Hopefully not. Just wanna finish this so I can start doing the free code camp stuff. Uh, tomorrow. And today I have some stuff to do off stream as well. So that's why I'm trying to rush to to this. I'll be right back.
those parts. Last tree entry, we treated for casting. The progression problem with all of our features derived from a single input time index. With a forecast, we have any time in the future. Defining the forecasting task. There are two things to establish before designing a forecasting model. What information is available at the time of forecasting is made and the time period during which you acquired forecasting. Forecasting origin, origin is time at which you are making a forecast. Directly, you might consider the forecast origin, origin to be that time for which you have training data for the time being predicted. So yeah, I don't think I need to read this stuff. Yeah, let me see. I think I'll do directly the exercises and then just research stuff in the tutorial, which I'll probably have to do anyway. So, let's create a variable with the with a different data frame. Grouping by family and date, and getting the mean, and unstacking family, which I assume is probably similar to the unnet thing on SQL, to the destruct, uh, de destruct, if that's a word, objects. So now it reads, passes this type here. For each column, for these three columns. Data set equals load multiple, multiple step data. So this is, I assume, yeah, this is a method, probably. It's not anywhere here. Data tabs. We just dot tab for this in enumerate data sets. For IDF in enumerate data sets, data tabs dot set title with data tabs children I display them. Oh, so we can make tabs here. We don't know about that. Match description to data set. Can you match each desk to the proper data set? Match the desk to the data set, answer one, two, or three. So, I don't understand. Oh, here. A okay, three step forecast using four leg using using four leg features with a two step lead time. One step forecast using three leg features with a one lead step with a one step lead time. I think I'm just gonna guess this one or just look at the solution. Because it doesn't matter much. Like I said before, I think differently about the way to go about time series. Then this lag stops. Look at the time indexes of the training and test sets. From this information, can you identify the forecasting task for store sales? I think, yeah, the reason that I probably stopped doing this is because I have a different philosophy on forecasting in general. And I think that this stuff that they are teaching and let people do probably works uh, at a high percentage of the time, but it is very flawed in the paradigm. So it might lead to drastic consequences in the future with the development of the exponential attack. And that's the problem because they're creating everything on a basis that you don't know. You're assuming you have a bunch of assumptions of the past and how the cause and effect relations, relationships are connected. So you're creating these models 
based on this paradigm which makes a lot of sense because you have to be practical and get things done so i understand why they use it this way but my interest is more uh to try to create tools that are better they're more connected with the laws of physics and other aspects other than just trying to do linear regression to find the prediction of, of the future because that doesn't work it's not it might it might work but it's not accurate that's the, the problem so you're always going to be overfitting even if you think you're not because they're at least in my belief system right now because they're more more connections more things that are hidden or that you have to think about and take into consideration if you're trying to predict the probability of different outcomes and i think that's the reason why they didn't do this the whole way but now I think I just I'm just gonna finish this quickly. Just so I have it finished there and I get the certificate. But create multi step data set for star sales. Create targets suitable for the star sales forecasting task. These four days of lag futures drop any missing values from both targets and futures. Make make four lag futures. So now let's go tutorial. So I can do make legs, to death make legs. So all I have to do is df.shift. So I think. Yeah, but I'm not sure there. Make multi step target. So in one of them, I think I need to use shift. It's probably on the X one. But then. Yeah. So this is probably Y dot shift and then four here. For I in range. Yeah, so it's four there. Probably. And then why make with step target? So it calls a function that passes y as the argument. And steps equals a drop dot drop and a. So maybe I should create a function as well. Yeah, to be honest, I don't feel like spending time, so just gonna look. Where's the hint? If I can't do it with the hint, I just just gonna look at the solution. Family sales are lock here. Make legs. Oh, so maybe the function was defined here somewhere. I don't see it. But okay. So obviously, here is going to be four, and there is going to be whatever is here. Y, yeah, Y. Just this Y here.
why is that so big? No. It's just because I copied the wrong way. So why legs for step sixteen? No, it has to be the double of the this one, apparently. Make sure you've successfully completed the previous exercise in the room and so to prepare the data for extra boost. What? Yeah, no worries. Essentiate a model that applies the deer rack strategy to extra boost. To assume is this? I'm not sure. Base estimator. Aggressor chain. So maybe I need to pass a model there. Let's try this one. Oh, it works. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that it should work, but. Okay. I think I think it's done. Let's save this. So only one hour, one hour and almost 40 minutes. But yeah, I think I'm going to stop here. So I'm probably done with cargo courses and tomorrow I'm going to start either tomorrow or the day after I'm going to start the free code camp stuff. Yeah. See you then.